Okay, Helen and Mark, um, could you tell me a little bit about um, how you've come to be here today? You've come a long distance, I understand. Yeah, Helen, Helen and me live about five and a half, maybe six miles north of here, straight up that road, up the Fosal Road. We live outside the city limits. We live in a place called Bedworth. It's, it's nearly six miles from here, and we walk in every Sunday to the uh, food and soup handout, and we get a household bag for cooking at home. Uh, we've been doing this about a year now, isn't it? My Helen is uh, learning disabled, but it took a very long time to get any kind of benefits or social security, any kind of recognition. Last year they took her youngest daughter off her to give to family because she was 12 and she was looking after Helen and doing everything for her. Then the social service, the, the job centre decided that she couldn't sign on because she wasn't capable because she had no brain functions, no numeracy, literacy skills, any mobile abilities. But the incapacity people and the disabled people wouldn't recognise her until she'd be fully diagnosed, which meant month after month after month for specialist. So we basically we were caught in that Pet 22 situation, couldn't sign on the dole, couldn't get the incapacity established, couldn't get the disability established. So we're basically, we're living on very little hand to mouth. And we, the God's honest truth is we basically survived on a lot of your, your, your food handouts because we live in the one room of our property. Obviously, we can't afford all this heating. I mean, minus 10 to 15. We can't afford to run the heating in this. And uh, we've, got, we've, got a, we've got a big ring burner and we've got a heater in there. And what we do is... Uh, the food that we gather from your, the food that we gather here, we put into a big pot, and I keep one broth going continuously because your household bags give us lots of fruit and veg and potatoes, and there's a lot of bread here, and that's what we do. And we really have, from week to week at times, survived on what you've given us. Put it out in the shed, because it's cooler in the shed. We don't have a fridge <laughs> or a freezer. Put it out in the shed and bring it in piecemeal and add up the big broth pot, add to it as we go along. We did that for a very long time. I mean, even now, Helen's just got her benefits established, but not fully, and that was from not August this year, August last year, and we're still fighting for things like we should get a bus pass and other things. Because it's not, she's not got a limb missing and it's not an obvious physical disability, because it's brain disability, shut down the higher functions and everything, it's a very hard thing to find. You know, even though, as I say, we're in that patch 22, they won't let us sign on, so an employment employer can seek her because she's not capable of employment, it's very hard then to prove your case for incapacity. So what's that make you think about the system? You just think that the system's wrong, it doesn't seem to care? I think or? the system's very unkind because the social services took Helen's 12-year-old daughter recognising that the daughter was looking after Helen. And they said a 12-year-old can't be looking after a mother, she must have a childhood, she must have everything. And then the dole office turn around and say, you can't sign off. And then everybody else says, well, you can't have any of this. You know, you can't have disability. You must prove every inch of the way. I mean, we've lost count of the appeals. We've lost count. I mean, we have stacked in the corner. We have reams of paperwork fighting and fighting. The Citizens Advice Bureau, independent advocates, you know, every sort of support agency that operates on a charitable basis, on a funded basis, is all for us. And that's the only reason we got through in the end. And obviously, the food that comes in is food. Yeah, we really have survived on your food as a broth. Yeah. It just seems unfair that the system can say she, her daughter can't look after and take the daughter and say she can't look after her daughter's welfare and say she can't sign on because she's not capable of employment. But then you have to fight two from now. From August, we finally won benefits, as in we still haven't completely won, but won a reasonable amount of benefits in October this year. Do you think August to August is 12 months? September, October, 14 months, and she still hasn't got a bus pass she's entitled to. So we walk back and forth six miles. So six miles, six yeah. miles there, six miles six back. Six miles back. We'll so six, the sun's going down now. Right. It's getting cold again. We'll probably leave here three half three. It will take us to five or five thirty to get home, and then I'll start chopping your food bag up and putting it in the box. Right, and that just about gets you through a week on that. It does with the bread. Yes. Yeah. At times it has been the one and only thing because they, they have no problems with spending benefits.
not an issue for them because they just put a tick in a box or stroke across a piece of paper and they, they alter your lives. You know, which is fundamentally unfair, but it's either those who have the power to do it to you and those of us who don't have the power to resist it. As I say, if it wasn't for people like CAB, independent advocates, other supported advisory people, benefits people that help you, Stuck. And people like yourself who actually come onto the street and give people who haven't actually got the money to go into those supermarkets and buy the food, they give us the food. Really stuck.